I want you to get together. Hello, everyone. I have a quick video I want to kind of just quickly get out to you guys today. And this comes off the back of one of my episodes about Christmas um, and theorizing around the concept of the millennial reign already happening. Now, again, a bit of a disclaimer. I'm not here to say the millennial reign did or did not already happen. I know it's an extremely contentious point for a lot of people. And especially in the particular political climate we are in, I understand there seems to be a lot of signs people are pointing to which they're interpreting as revelations coming to pass and the um, the return of Jesus Christ coming now, you know, and prophecy being fulfilled right now. So talking about preterism or this idea that the millennia reign has already come and gone, I understand can be an extremely upsetting concept for a lot of people at this moment. But... I do like to test all ideas and theorise all possibilities. That's just how I roll. That's how my mind works. And I do want to theorise a bit further on this concept that the Millennial Kingdom has already happened. Um, Because someone left a comment on my my video about this, this Christmas episode where I was basically adding the idea of, well, you know, if we are in the Millennial... Well, say, if the Millennial Reign has already happened, then we need to reinterpret some things about the modern age and consider what they may actually mean. And that was that Santa Claus is then a mockery, a direct inverted satanic mockery of Jesus Christ, who would currently be in the North Pole in the Blessed City, which is waiting to be encircled and destroyed in the final revelation and times event during the little season of Satan. This is all post-millennial reign, of course. Because people say, well, where did Jesus go then? You know, where is Jesus right now if the millennial reign is over? And well, the answer is he's he's in the North Pole. He's waiting there in Eden, some people would say. And people describe it as the Black Rock or the Rupus Negra, the thing in the center that causes the pole to be the North Pole. It's a huge magnetic rock. And obviously we have this mythos of Santa Claus, a fat bearded gentleman who lives in the North Pole who's omnipotent and knows if you're naughty or nice and judges us. That's basically saying Jesus Christ in the North Pole, but instead of Jesus, we refer to somebody who has the name, which is the anagram of Satan. You know, it's, it's a literal antichrist figure. From the perspective that the millennial reign has already happened, and assuming that if the millennial reign theory is true, that Jesus is in the North Pole, then that Santa Claus analogy makes a lot more sense, is what I theorised. So somebody else threw in an extra theory, um, which I'm going to read to you, um, Amanda here. And it's actually, it's just fascinating. I never even considered this concept. And I think it's worth mentioning as an extra puzzle piece or an extra piece of information to add to the pile of knowledge and information that points towards the millennial reign possibly already happening. And this is a concept I don't think I've heard anybody else even talk about. So hats off to Amanda here, all credit to her. I just thought it'd be fascinating to share with you guys this 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 brainstorm she gave me. So she says here, you know, I've been thinking about all this for the past two years. For those of you new to the idea of the millennial reign has happened, look into the post-mill preterism eschatology. So she goes on to recommend the names of a couple of the researchers. She says both of them say that the millennial reign happened or that it was metaphorical and referred to the church age. I don't agree. I believe that the millennial reign was real and that Jesus and the saints reigned from a heavenly Jerusalem in the sky. Now, this whole floating city thing as well, you know, is quite a common theme throughout a lot of ancient cultures. Um, And it's implying that the new Jerusalem, the kingdom in which Jesus reigned from, which heaven down to earth, basically, is a floating city of a sort, which is an interesting concept. And I know Alpha Talks talked about this as well. The floating city did a whole episode breaking down the concept of the floating city in the Bible and also within other cultures. And she goes on to say, you know, Jerusalem in the sky. It may sound crazy, but many cultures have stories about an elite class of people who reign from city sky cities, and it is in a lot of pop culture and anime. I believe the North Pole, or New Jerusalem, or Camp of the Saints, or Eden, all are the Rupus Negra. And I believe that the Rupus Negra, or North Pole, um, Camp of the Saints, New Jerusalem, Eden, etc., is the magnetic North Pole. 
which makes sense because the ancient accounts of the Rupus Nigra say it was a magnetic mountain. So that's what I mentioned earlier. So anyway, she says here, the magnetic North Pole has reportedly been moving towards Siberia for the past few decades, and the speed at which it is moving is erratic. So the best guess is that it will be over Siberia in 3 to 27 years. What if all the anti-Russian programming is to prime us to go march across the broad plain of the earth and attack the holy city once it's over Siberia? I think this is where Project Bluebeam comes in, she says. I think that maybe the enemy will try to make unbelievers think that we are being attacked by aliens over Siberia. But believers in Christ will think the threat is real, but they'll think it's demons instead of aliens. Either way, the enemy has convinced all the people of the earth to encircle the camp of saints. It is a battle the enemy is doomed to lose, but he will still try. So she goes on to here to reference a few other things, but I, I ask her, you know, I've not heard of this idea before. Did you come up with this theory yourself? Is this your theory? And she says, yep, the idea that the beloved city may be moving to Siberia is something I thought of after I read an article about the magnetic North Pole moving to Siberia. That combined with the anti-Russian propaganda that has been going on for decades, even after the Cold War supposedly ended and way before the Ukraines have started, it made me wonder if perhaps that they were trying to prime Westerners to hate even the everyman Russian so that we would have no hesitation in going to war on their soil. I looked it up. Siberia is the broadest plain on the earth. So I looked into the articles that she was talking about, and I found a couple, and here it is. Sure enough, you know, the magnetic North Pole is rapidly moving because of some blobs, it claims here. And it says it started in Canada, at Canada, and it's now inching close to Siberia. Thanks a lot, blobs. And I think it's funny. So the, uh, they basically say here, ever since the um, the British uh, polar explorer James Clark Ross first identified it on the Booth Boothia Peninsula in Canada's Nunavut Territory in 1831, scientists have been carefully measuring its location. But in recent years, our North Pole has been inching closer and closer to Siberia at a surprisingly rapid pace. In 2020, researchers from the United Kingdom and Denmark uncovered the reason for this mysterious movement. Two writhing lobes of magnetic force duking it out near the Earth's core. So basically, it says here, you know, the wandering of the Earth's you know, magnetic pole, the location where the magnetic field points vertica, vertically downwards, has long been a topic of scientific fascination. Uh, the Earth's magnetic field is generated by molten iron in its outer core. The flow of this liquid iron can influence the location of the planet's magnetic poles. While poles have drifted and even swapped places numerous times over the course of the Earth's long history, what's different about the recent shift is how quickly it's happening. From 1999 to 2005, the Earth's magnetic pole went from shifting 9 miles at the most each year to as much as 37 miles a year. And here's the trajectory, you know, it starts down here in the Nineveh area of uh, Canada. And as each of these years documenting it have gone past, it's just been moving closer and closer to the true magnetic, sorry, the, the, the North Pole as we do it on maps. It's going past that point, and now it's making its way towards the Siberian coast. So, obviously these scientists have their answer, don't they, using their, their heliocentric globular Earth model. And they're basically saying, we can see through the thousands upon thousands of miles of the Earth's supposed crust, and we know for a fact that two big blobs of iron are moving around, and therefore the poles are moving. It's basically just a bunch of gibberish, trust me, I'm a doctor situation, is what we're going on here. Um, if we t think of this from the, the biblical worldview and the enclosed system worldview, we know the answer is not satisfactory. Um, but if we consider what Revelations was saying, that the beloved city is on Earth, right in the center, you know, this black rock, this magnetic rock, uh, the city, the camp of the saints, is moving towards Siberia, the broadest plain. Now, she's referencing here, you know, Revelations 29. I had a look at it, and sure enough, in many of the translations, it talks about 
and they swarmed up over the broad plain of the earth. Um, it's mentioned quite a few times. Um, when they came up on the whole earth and surrounded the camp of saints, they came up over the breadth is a very common one. Breadth seems to be mentioned more. But in some translations, it's described as a broad plain, matched up over the broad plain, the broad expanse of the earth, um, the broad expanse. Um, what, I was going to keep going through here, you know. Some of them haven't mentioned it at all, just that it was on the surface of the earth. Um, marched across the earth. Um, marched over the broad expanse in this one. The breadth of the earth again. So it's either the breadth of the earth or the broad expanse of the earth. And as she's saying, you know, in the map, Siberia is the broadest expanse. You can see it here. You know, this, this one on the right, you know, behind this thing that's just come up that I can't get rid of. But you can see it's a very large expanse of land from, from you know, north to south. It goes on for thousands and thousands of miles. Um, far larger than the expanse of land at the top, let's say, of um, Americas. And I think it's fascinating, you know, that she's onto something here. Perhaps what if, just theorising, if the millennial reign has come and gone, and Jesus and the saints abandoned the earth to recede to the beloved city, which then made its way, floated its way to the centre of the earth, which became true magnetic north, where all power and energy radiates out from, where the aurora borealis is, you know, all this type of stuff, and this place we cannot have access to, this place that's been occulted on all maps, you know. What if we are in that time where it is moving towards Russia? And it will, essentially, the city will land in view of us all. That's <laughs> just an interesting concept. Because we do know, as science is telling us, the magnetic North Pole is moving rapidly away from the centre and it's moving towards Siberia. So, we, you know, if, if we want to believe that the millennial reign has already happened, if you want to go down that route, then you have to believe that what's moving to Siberia is a real thing. It's the Rupus Nigra, it's this black rock as described here, you know, a black rock located in the magnetic North Pole, or the North Pole itself, described by Mercator as a 33 French mile in size, and explains why all compasses point to that location. It's on all these old maps, you know. It's a floating city in the centre of these islands, which have been hidden from us, you know, um, which have these four rivers coming out of, as you can see in all these images. It's, that's it, that's the beloved city, you know, and by biblical standards it's been explained as to why it's there, you know, because that's where Jesus and the saints are. And it, again, it, I just thought I'd bring that to you guys, just food for thought, you know, the, the magnetic North Pole has moved and it is moving rapidly and it's making its way <laughs> to Siberia. Um, and what do you think? What do you think of that concept? It's fascinating, isn't it? I, th I think that was very interesting. You know, the North Pole has shifted from over here on the left and it's moving closer to over here on the right. Um, I just, I just thought that was really interesting and it fits in with this millennial reign thing a lot. You know, it, it's, it's something we have to consider as a possibility if the millennial reign has already come and gone. Okay. That's where the camp of saints will be. That's the floating city, and the floating city is possibly making its way to Russia, to Siberia, to the largest expanse, to the broad plain in which the masses of people in which Satan will gather will travel through to encircle the city. And then fire is going to rain down from heaven and destroy everybody. <laughs> okay, so those enemies of the beloved city do not win that battle. Um, but if they can convince us it's aliens invading or something, or it's demons coming through a portal or something, it can then encourage every faction to go up there and do something about it, to travel across that expanse, you know, to to encircle the camp of saints. Interesting. So yeah, thanks for sharing that comment there, um, Amanda. Fascinating train of thought. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't, you know, I'm not going to put rest of my... my uh, all my eggs in one basket on this one, you know, but it's in terms of theorizing and speculation, I think this is excellent. Uh, so thanks for sharing. 
I hope you guys gained something of value from this <laughs> this perspective. Like I said, science itself is not going to tell you that uh, Jesus is residing in the North Pole, you know, <laughs> but it can observe that the, the thing that irradiates energy in the pole from has been moving rapidly. I think it's interesting that they were measuring it from around 1831, around the time people claim within this Tartarian millennial reign period, as when Jesus pretty much left and the thousand year reign ended is when we start to measure where the beloved city began to travel. I think that's also interesting to note as well, just the time scales and when the measurements began. Um, and maybe that's, that is the true timing. The little season is as long as it takes for the beloved city to travel from one side of the waters to the other of the North Pole. That's how long it takes. And that's the little season. That's when he has, you know, and it, by the time they make it across the other side, Satan, hopefully, by Satan's standards, will have got his army together. You know, that's what he's aiming for. That's his plan. <laughs> that's how it's supposed to be. Um, but we'll see. I saw one interesting comment down here where somebody's like, the mainstream scientific community is not reporting truthfully about the cynical movement of the magnetic poles. This is a pole shift that's about to happening. Like the sudden destruction's about to come on the earth. The poles are about to change and swap, you know. They have that theory and idea and that's why the government's lying because they're covering up a disaster that's about to happen, a natural disaster. When the truth, truth may be that it's not that they're covering up the possible coming of a natural disaster, but they're covering up that our savior, Jesus Christ and the saints, are in a city in the North Pole, currently drifting its way across to Siberia for a coming war, which was prophesied. Maybe. Anyway, I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for listening. Let me know what you think of this concept. And as always, God bless. I want you to get together.